Welcome to Really American. I am Michael Hain. I hope you've all had a fantastic fall weekend. If you notice, a lot of the foliage is coming in, a lot of brightly orange leaves. Let's hope the brightly orange fascist one falls come November 5th. Anyway, now if you recall, I spoke about how Trumpy Dumpty managed to insult, insult the entire city of Detroit and a critical swing state. I don't think anything that we're talking about today is high on our list. Every, the whole country is going to be like, you want to know the truth? It'll be like Detroit. Our whole country will end up being like Detroit if she's your president. You're going to have a mess on your hands. She destroyed San Francisco. Now, I already debunked that latest fear and smear nonsense to fall out of the portal of hell. Trumpy Dumpy calls him out. But somebody else did an even better job. And that person is Governor Tim Walls. See, the thing about Tim Walls is, and what I love about him is, is he because he has that like folksy way of politely telling you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> he really does. He'll just be like, well, you know, all you guys are weird. And how he says it and does it, it's just so digestible and refreshing. Anyway, Tim Walls, being from the Midwest, <laughs> he had a little thing or two to say about Trump the Dumpty's attack on Detroit. Let's take a look at that. Now, look, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, they got a little different view of things. Just yesterday, Donald Trump was in Detroit and he said, our whole country will end up being Detroit. You're going to have a mess on your hands. Well, look, I know you don't, that's not unexpected for him. That's exactly what he's going to do, tear down America. But if the guy would have ever spent any time in the Midwest, like all of us know, we'd know Detroit's experiencing American comeback and renaissance. <laughs> Cities growing, crimes down, factories are opening up. But those guys, all they know about manufacturing is manufacturing every time they show up. Every time they show up. Look, this guy has spent his life, Trump has spent his life talking a big game. But he has been an absolute disaster for working people. One of the biggest losers of manufacturing jobs of any American president in history. Trump's presidency was an endless string of broken promises. He actually came here to Warren when he first ran. And he promised you, under a Trump presidency, you won't lose a single plant. Technically, it wasn't a lie, because he lost six of them, <laughs> not one. So, as they fact check me, I got it right. They lost six of them. Look, he lost the GM transmission plant down the road. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. He promised to fight for union workers, repeatedly turned his back on him. He even encouraged automakers to move manufacturing out of Michigan and go to anti-union states so they could pay their workers less. There's the reason that the UAW members endorsed Kamala Harris and your president and many of your members called him exactly what he was, a scab. It's true, it's true. Nobody manufactures more bullshit than Trump. I am the world's all-time leader. In fact, the late, great Hannibal Lecter has said Trump is the all-time leader of manufacturing bullshit. Kudos, Tim Walls. First of all, this is exactly what I have been clamoring for the Democrats to do, to get more down and dirty and fight these teenage, 80s teenage movie bullies in the playground and take them down there in front of the entire school to see and cheer them on. And that's what it is. Like, you know, it's America versus 80s teenage bullies. Biff Tannen, which is Trump. I'm, I'm honestly surprised Trump never said, make like a tree and get out of here. But now Tim Walls, congratulations on uh, that sarcasm and high-minded vitriol. But he brought up a very interesting point there in that speech. And that being that manufacturing jobs weren't doing all too well under Trump and Dumpty. In fact, we were losing manufacturing jobs prior to COVID, which I believe even California Governor Gavin Newsom brought up. 
Let's take a look at that. Made a lot of big promises to American manufacturing workers during his campaign, and as you just saw, in Ohio in 2017. Well, that hasn't worked out so well. This week, the livelihoods of hundreds of workers at a General Motors plant in Lordstown, Ohio, fell into limbo when General Motors closed the last assembly plant that manufactures the Chevy Cruze. The plant produced cars for more than 50 years, and its closure is a huge blow to Lordstown. Closing that plant will eliminate nearly 1,700 hourly jobs. Hmm. Now, I wonder if Trump de Dumpty made some other totally bold, empty promises that screwed over workers that even Stevie Wonder can see he was lying about. Oh, wait. After five years working at a furnace factory in Indianapolis, Renee, along with over 200 of her colleagues, are being laid off. Tomorrow I'm losing my job as the company I work for, the company I had hoped to serve until retirement, sells me out. At a meeting to discuss the company's decision, those being let go expressed their disappointment, especially as many like Dwayne had voted for Donald Trump in 2016 because he said he would help workers like them. Just like everyone else had voted for him, uh, help our economy out. Um, hope to do what he promised the nation he'd do about keeping jobs in America safe. Um, apparently it's not happening as of right now. As president-elect, Donald Trump visited Carrier's Indiana factory, touting a deal he personally helped broker $7 million in tax breaks to keep the plant from moving to Mexico, saving over a 1,000 jobs. Since then, Carrier has nonetheless laid off over 500 workers, but many still believe Trump is fighting for them in a sector that's battling both delocalization and automation. When you talk to those people today, some of those people today, what they will tell you is that give him a chance. And so you're still hearing it. Our, some of our members are still supporting the president of the United States. You know, hearing those workers speak and some of those deferring views is fascinating because it just really encapsulates my discussion or rather interview with leaving MAGA founder Rich Logas. I don't know if you were able to check it out, but uh, Rich was once a card carrying member of MAGA. Um, he since saw the light of day and he actually spoke at the Democratic National Convention. And when I was speaking with Rich, I was really trying to understand the mindset of how anyone who isn't a multimillionaire or billionaire could still support Trump. Um, and I pointed to the possibility of, yeah, kind of understanding why they would be behind him in 2016, even though all of us knew it was nothing but relentless BS that Trump had been screwing over workers his entire pathetic spoon fed life, but kind of understood it. So it was interesting to hear that other gentleman with that steel plant, who was saying, like, despite everything that's going on, the fact that people are losing jobs and all, some of them are still behind Donald Trump. And that's what's fascinating is because some of them are still behind Donald Trump and that he can still get millions of votes. It's it's confounding. It's maddening. But we've reached a tipping point, And Kamala Harris has this thing controlled. Now, we can't get complacent. But between her and Tim Walls going out there day to day, going to the critical swing states, having a solid A game ground operation, I think we're all right. Anyway, I am Michael Hayne. This is Really American. Please subscribe to our channel and check me out on my latest TikTok at Mike Hayne Comedian.